mammals that survive this event stay small, maybe for a couple million years. They start to get slightly larger and diversify. We have a sort of a lag effect with this KT event, a recovery of perhaps the ecosystem, and then the mammals really take off. Mass extinction had provided an unexpected opportunity. You can think of mammals after the KT event as colonizers. They first landed and made a toehold on a new land where there are lots of tremendous advantages to them and they're not competing with these large, big, plant-eating or meat-eating dinosaurs. They spread out to all parts of the world. They competed and diversified until most of the largest animals on Earth were mammals. About 35 million years ago, mammal evolution produced the first true monkeys and apes from earlier, smaller primates. Then, generation after generation, the process of adaptation and change, of evolution, continued. Around five to six million years ago in Africa, the first human-like primates emerged. Some of their descendants would play an unprecedented role in evolution's future. They left their bones on the valley floor, in caves and on lake beds. They began to walk upright. They left their footprints in volcanic ash that hardened. One lineage branched. Some species went extinct, while others evolved into the ancestors of modern humans. Today, the world is bursting at the seams with people. This is Bangkok, Thailand. Population 10 million and growing. There are now six billion of us on the planet. Even the dinosaurs would run for their lives. We have caused the rate of extinction to soar. It's now over 100 times greater than normal. Many scientists worry that we are the new asteroid, bringing about the sixth great mass extinction on Earth. This is Kenkajan National Park. Population zero. In an area twice the size of Bangkok. From all appearances, a hidden world. Unspoiled. Timeless. Just 300 miles from Bangkok, it's protected by natural barriers. The Tenasserim mountain range runs through it, creating a steep, rugged terrain. The forest is dense. The Pittsbury River can be difficult to navigate. But no one knows if the animals living here have found a sanctuary or have disappeared from the forest. We're in grave danger of the empty forest syndrome. Having a beautiful, seemingly intact forest on the surface but inside that forest, the natural components which maintain the flow of energy through the system, it's disrupted. Now, people say, so what does it matter if one component's gone? What if you don't have the Sumatran rhino? What if the, the civet species are all gone or other things? But each thing has evolved to play an incredibly important role within this complex puzzle. Helen Rabinowitz wants to know if Kenkajan has escaped the escalating rates of extinction found elsewhere. So he and his colleague, Tony Lynham, collect data on the actual number of animals living in the park, especially the carnivores.
Large carnivores, such as tigers, are often the first animals to be wiped out from a system. If you go into an area and find relatively abundant sign of large carnivores, you know what you're dealing with, by necessity, is a very healthy, at least seemingly stable, natural habitat. A typical habitat works this way. Sunshine, nutrients, and water make plants grow. The plants are eaten by herbivores, which in turn are eaten by carnivores. About a hundred pounds of plants generally sustain about 10 pounds of herbivore, which sustain about one pound of carnivore. Healthy carnivores mean a healthy forest. When Alan Rabinowitz was here last, the news about the forest was good. More than 10 years ago, I landed here in Gengajan National Park. We got down in here, and I was very pleased to see that the place was beautifully intact in terms of the vegetation. But more importantly, I was able to find tiger sign virtually everywhere I looked. I would hike through small rivers and there'd be families of otters starting to swim around me. Elephants came to my camp at night. Gibbons sang every single morning. Hornbills flew overhead all the time. All the signs of a healthy, intact, relatively unhunted forest were there, which made it probably one of the few places in Thailand. And in fact, when I surveyed throughout the entire country at the end of the survey, it became even more clear that Genga John was easily the most pristine, the most untouched piece of forest left in this entire country. But is it the same today? On a search for life, Every stop offers more clues. Mm, fresh elephant, nice size. His cat, small cat. The group uses well-traveled elephant paths to navigate the forest. An elephant trail is a trail that elephants are walking on constantly, and every time they walk past this this vine, they just push it back this way and then push it back this way, and all of the bark has started to come off. Three other teams are in the park each retrieving special cameras with motion sensors, which were carefully placed a month before. Called camera traps, they take a photo when triggered by an animal walking by. Oh, batteries, I guess. Well, the camera's taken a whole roll of film and it's rewound, so there's 36 shots taken. What the camera traps will help us do is start wrapping some numbers around these things, helping us quantify. It's one thing to say, boy, sign of tiger is everywhere. It's another to say, just on this one survey, we have taken pictures of a minimum of X numbers of tigers. The cameras serve as an unseen observer. In one day, a camera trap can catch more tigers on film than Rabinowitz's team could see in months. I'd say tonight camp here, tomorrow morning, go down the stream and check out this area and check out what we've got in terms of... So that's where you think we might have Siamese crocodile? Yeah. That would be neat. Oh, That'd be really something neat. else. The Siamese crocodile is a species that 30 years ago lived throughout the tropical forests of Asia. But they have been relentlessly hunted for their skins. Not a single one has been seen in over a decade. <laughs> 